Proverbs chapter 3, we'll be looking at, uh, we'll be reading the first 10 verses of Proverbs chapter 3. As you're looking up the scriptures, Proverbs chapter 3, I just want to uh, remind the church of two things. Water baptism, if you have not yet followed Jesus in his commandment to be water baptized, make uh, this opportunity your time for water baptism. How many have been water baptized? Can I just see your hand? Wow, fantastic. This is uh, our commitment in following Jesus and where he calls us to repent and be baptized in water. And so if you have yet to do that, I just encourage you, take this opportunity, this Thanksgiving Sunday, what a great day on Thanksgiving Sunday to give the Lord thanks and to follow Jesus in the waters of baptism. Take this opportunity. Last one I'll quickly mention as you're turning to Proverbs chapter 3. The Holy Spirit conference is coming up September 28 and 29. It's just a few weeks away. I was talking to David Forrest. He has been here before. Does anybody remember Pastor David Forrest? He has uh, been here a few years ago, ministered on occasion. He's a great evangelist, great speaker. He called me this week and he said, I have a question for you. He said, you've invited me to come. He said, can I bring a team of pastors to join you for the whole weekend? I said, sure. He, he said this. He said, I, I, I believe th this group of people, these team of pastors, I've come to them and I said, would you join me at Richmond Hill Pentecostal Church to come and pray over the people of God at the altar that people would receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit? He said to me this. He said, he said, Will, I feel so strongly about this team. He said, I'll pay for their mileage, their hotel accommodations, and all their meals if you just let me bring them. He was so passionate about it. At, as the phone call was unfolding, I said, David, if you feel these, these people are called to be here for this weekend at Richmond Hill Pentecostal Church, then I don't want one penny to come out of your pocket. I said, We're gonna, I'm going to take care of the mileage, the food, and the accommodations. If you feel like these people, he said, I believe it, and I'm, I'm coming with a team ready to bless and pray over the people of God at RHPC. I'm like, okay, I'm getting ready. So would you come? September 28th, it's Saturday night. September 28th, Saturday night, 7 o'clock. Sunday night, 6 o'clock. Take the time. Mark it in your calendar. Just come. Just come. Don't, don't bring your wallet. Don't, bring, don't dress up. Uh, bring your family. Bring your friends. Just come to the house of God and say, Lord, I'm ready to receive from you. Would you make this a priority in your fall schedule? Do you receive that this morning? Amen. Are you there? Proverbs 3, 1 to 10. Are you there? Would you join me in standing for the word of God? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 says, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Do you believe that? Let no mercy and truth, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Spirit of God, help us. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Verse 9 and 10, my last two verses in the text for this message. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. 
Read it with me. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. I want you to see these two words. So your barns will be what? Filled. Your vats will overflow. Let's pray. Father, I pray that that as we follow the Lord, as we honor the Lord, you'd fill us to overflowing right now. I, I speak this out over the people of God as we look to your word. I pray that you'd stir us up in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, we'd be filled with the Holy Spirit, filled to overflowing. Our cup would overflow over our lives. The blessings of the Lord would be poured out in our household with health and strength and long life and favor with God and man. I speak the blessing of the Lord over this house today. I pray that you would prosper, that your soul would prosper, and that your household would go from blessing to blessing, strength to strength, for the goodness and glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, amen. You may be seated. You hold in your hand the book of Proverbs. I don't know if you've had a chance to read the book of Proverbs. What a profound book. Proverbs, let me talk about uh, the book of Proverbs just for a moment before I, I get into this text. And I won't keep you long today. I just want to draw your attention to the Word of God. Proverbs, Proverbs is God's Word to God's people on how to live God's way. If you want to have a happy life, Proverbs will tell you how. If you want to have a peaceful, purposeful, and prosperous life, Proverbs will tell you how. If you want to please God, Proverbs will tell you how to do that. If you want to have favor with people, Proverbs. How many want to have favor with people? Don't you like having favor with people? I, every now and then I'll, I'll meet people. They are in contention with people wherever they go. I was uh, uh, visiting somebody uh, this past week, and I happened to be uh, near a bus stop, and I heard somebody on the phone. I don't want to eavesdrop, but sometimes they speak so loud you cannot help it. Do you know what I'm talking about? I couldn't help it. They were not even next to me. They were paces away from me. But their speaking on their phone was so loud that everybody within earshot could hear every single word. And as this young woman was on the phone, she was upset and frustrated with the person she's talking to. And, and I just couldn't help. I was standing there quietly waiting. And as this person was speaking, she was saying things like, you just don't get it. You don't understand. You don't know what's going on. Uh, listen, and sh there was this argument on the phone. And then I, I, okay, arguments and contention happened. But here's what happened that caught my attention. She paused her phone call and said, excuse me, excuse me. I have another call on another line. Please wait clicked the phone to the next line, and then she said, and I got a problem with you too. <laughs> and I felt the tension and the blood pressure in this young woman. My heart went out to her because she went from one call to the next in argument and contention and bitterness, anger. Maybe she was the one on the receiving end. Maybe I, I don't know, but church... I, can I just tell you, I want to live at peace with all people. I want to get up in the morning in peace. I want to go to bed at night with my head on the pillow saying, I'm going to bed with a good conscience, a clear conscience. I'm at peace. I want to be able to love people and, and in return, be loved in return and walk together arm in arm. It's not going to go right all the time. But Lord, I pray for peace. Peace. I want you to have peace. I want you to have favor. Isn't it good when you have favor? You walk into the workplace and there's favor. You walk into your house, the sanctuary of your home, favor. You walk into church, there's favor. I want you to have that. Proverbs, 
Proverbs, what a great book of the Bible. If you want to have favor with people, Proverbs will tell you how. This is not just a book of tips and tricks. This is just not some old-fashioned old advice from an old man. Listen now, Proverbs teaches, get this now, universal principles that apply to all people in all times. Are you still with me this morning? Our world may be changing. Uh, with technology, it is phenomenal to see all the changes in this world. Isn't this uh, a bit of... Uh, doesn't this make your head spin at times when you stand back and see the rapid technological changes of this world? How many of you have a speaker device at home? Like, uh, I think it's Google Home or Alexa or, can I just see your hand? You got this speaker device. Anybody? Nice and high. I want to I wanna see how many. Okay, still the minority. Save yourselves, people. Save yourselves. I Yeah. They're listening on you, I know. Do you know, so last Christmas, Renee and I got this Alexa home speaker uh, for, for different things. And uh, we were, Renee and I were having this uh, conversation at home, just in the living room and uh, talking away. I don't know what we were talking about, but just having a deep conversation. And in the midst of our We were interrupted by Alexa, who said, Hello, would you mind repeating what you just said? <laughs> right. And somebody in Silicon Valley is typing out everything we say. I don't know. Uh, what a world, church. What a world. You walk in and say something, and your lights come on, and your garage door closes. And, and uh, what a world that we live in. Uh, this world is changing so fast, but I'm talking about Proverbs this morning. Listen, listen. For all the technological changes in our world, listen, people are still people. Human nature is still human nature. Sin is still sin. And God's word is still God's word. And this will always be. Isaiah 40, verse 8 says this, The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. Can I get an amen this morning? So, so as not to keep you this morning, I want to touch on this, these two verses. Deborah, would you put the slide up? Verses 9 and 10, verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord. Would you, would you say this with me? Help me. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow. So this word honor, I want to talk about this word honor just for a moment. What does it mean to honor the Lord? It says in the scriptures, honor the Lord. How do you honor the Lord? What does it mean to honor the Lord? Let me give you a definition, and some of you are taking notes, and I'll give you the moment to write this down if you're interested. To honor the Lord means to hold God in high respect, high reverence, and distinction. To honor the Lord means to hold God in high respect, high reverence, and distinction. God has a special place of honor in your life. Who is He? Who is He? He is our creator, our sustainer, our deliverer. Who is this God? He is our savior, our redeemer our healer, our baptizer, our sanctifier. He is our rock and our hope, our refuge, our fortress. Lord of lords, king of kings, is the Lord worthy of high honor? He is worthy of high honor. Do you honor the Lord? Re Deborah, Deborah, Revelation 4, you know this verse. 
let me, just before we get to the verse 11, it says, The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the, the throne. What do they say? Help me, church. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and, and power. For you created all things. And by your will they exist and were created. We, in, we can't really get the image of, of these elders falling down, casting their crowns before the Lamb of God. And declaring he's worthy, 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 worthy. What does it mean to honor the Lord, church? God is worthy of high honor, high respect, high reverence, high distinction, high praise. He's worthy of high praise. Church, he's worthy to be praised. Above all things, above my circumstance, above my situation, He's worthy to be high and lifted up. We exalt the Lord because he's worthy, worthy to be praised. Deborah, put it up. Help me now, church. Come on, I'm, I'm, I want to fill you with this sense of what it means to honor the Lord. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the, the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? We're talking about honoring the Lord. The scripture says to honor the Lord. How do we honor the Lord? I, I want to just start off by saying, church, he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be high and lifted up. Our omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God. Here's the other thing, very quickly, I'm talking about honoring the Lord. The Bible says that one day, listen now, all people will bow down to him. Do you believe that? I, I just, I'm just trying to give you a sense here of, I'm reminding you of who God is. That every person, listen, no matter how powerful someone is or thinks they are, they will all bow down before the Lord. No matter how great a celebrity or politician, no matter how many followers you have on Twitter, Every tongue, hello, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Why? Why? Because he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised above all things. Why do we honor him? Because he's worthy, 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 worthy to be praised. When you get up in the morning, church, he's there. When you go to bed at night, he is there. He is your God. He's worthy to be praised. And so how do we honor the Lord? Uh, uh, Deborah, if you can put the verse back on again, the next one. Oh, the, uh, before that. Verse 9 and 10 again of Proverbs. Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. So this stirs my heart because this week I've been focusing about honoring the Lord. Are you still with me this morning? I, I, I've been stirred in, in the midst of sickness and in the midst of fatigue. I've been uh, focusing and thinking and pondering about this verse and what it means to honor the Lord. I'll get to the next part in a second, but... Uh, church, listen, I want to be somebody who honors the Lord. I want to be someone who is, has the preeminence of God so uh, s mm, solid, so established. That's the word I'm looking for. So established in my life that he is above all things. That I'm not turning to the left or to the right, trying to find my own way, my own agenda, doing my own thing, and every Sunday go to church and exalt him. Uh-uh. Monday to Saturday and Sunday morning, I want to give him praise. I want God to be first. 
that when the scripture says seek first, it doesn't mean on Sunday mornings. It means every moment of the day in my heart, who is first in my life? I declare, I declare it. Though I trip and stumble and fall, church, I declare it. I want God to be first and foremost. You know, Isaiah says, uh, the people honor me with their lips. Hello? But their hearts are. Do you know that as a human being, in our weakness, in, in our self-sufficiency, and in our selfishness, and in our self-centeredness, it is easy to honor the Lord with our lips. We can say all the right things, sing all the right things, and yet even when we honor, as Isaiah says, the Lord with our lips, our hearts can be what? Far away. And so the Lord's been speaking to me convicting me, correcting me, chastising me, drawing me near, saying, honor the Lord, not just with your lips, but with your actions. Actions speak louder. Can you imagine? Louder than words. Honoring the Lord. And so I want to talk about this today. Uh, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of your increase. What are we talking about here? I got to keep moving quickly. Uh, I got to move faster. So honor the Lord with your possessions and the first fruits. What is the, 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 the writer of, of Proverbs? Many of these are Solomon, but verse this, this chapter, it's unclear who the author is. It may be Solomon, maybe someone else. The author is saying, is teaching, teaching the students, how do you honor the Lord? Honor the Lord with your possessions with the first fruits of your increase, that when you plant your gardens, your fruits and vegetables, your pear trees and your banana trees, if you've been to Israel, you, all you see sometimes as far as the eye can see are these banana trees, these, these crops that are prospering. Listen, the last time I was in Israel, what I thought were grapefruits were oranges because of the prosperity of the land. And so as they plant these crops, the writer comes and says, when you collect, when you have increase, when you receive your crops, when you begin to take down the fruit and collect the harvest, uh, bring your first fruits where? To the Lord. Bring them to the Lord. It, it, it is as a promise, it is as a prayer that you would collect what you have harvested and come to the house of God and bring them into the house of God. What are you saying? Thank you, Lord, for the blessings in my garden. Thank you, Lord, for feeding my family. Thank you, Lord. Your, your heart is so filled with gratitude that you take the very first crops. Who brought the rain? It was the Lord. Who caused it to grow? It was the Lord. Who brought the harvest about to have uh, uh, your land that you have flowing with milk? And who was it? Who was it? It's from the Lord. And so all you can do is collect the first fruits and bring them and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have a heart of thanks today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so this is the instruction for the people of God. No, no, it's not all for you. It's for you to stop and say, of my increase, I return to the Lord, thanks. And what are you doing? You're, you're kind of paying it forward, as they say. Saying, Lord, Lord, here, here's the first fruits of the increase. Now, Lord, do it again. Next, next season, do it again. How many want the Lord to fill your basket one more time? Lord, I pray healing over the house one more time. Blessing over the house one more time. Not just today, but next day and next week and next month. And so this understanding of first fruits and understanding the blessing of tithing. Tithing, this giving of your increase, giving it back to the Lord, saying, Lord, thank you for the blessings. Listen, I've, I've talked to the church over the years about this, but... I, I'm going to share this one more time. I'm very thankful for my parents. Listen, you know, so many of you have been asking about my family, and certainly they are in 
the twilight season of their days. But I'm very thankful for the heritage I have. My, my dad was a lift truck driver at the Oshawa GM plant. This is, I'm from an immigrant household, new to Canada. I'm the first English speaker in my generation, in my family. And so this is, uh, we come from just new immigrant beginnings. But my parents, when they came to, to the Lord, God took a hold of their life. And when I came along, they were walking with God, and they did something very unique in my life. Even from a child, they taught me the blessing of tithing. Uh, I still remember it. You probably remember the days when you were a child. I still remember my parents would give me $2 a week. That sounds humble nowadays, doesn't it? Long time ago. But I never forget being taught the principles of tithing and giving. I had to, what, did, what did you have to do for your allowance? I had to do two things. Clean my room, wash the dishes. No dishwasher, I was the dishwasher. Right? And so every day, morning and night, clean room, wash the dishes. This was not a, a hard task, but it was a clear task. Uh, if it didn't get done... No allowance. If it got done, allowance. It was very simple. Now, those $2 a week meant an awful lot to me. Remember those old-fashioned $2 Canadian bills? Come on. Anybody? All right, if you're under 40, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But I, I still remember uh, on, on a Saturday night or a Friday night at the end of the week, my mother going into her wallet, pulling out a $2 Canadian bill. Dishes done every day, room clean. Here you go. But it came with a, with a teaching. What was the teaching? What do you do with the $2? Well, I knew. I knew because this was done from my earliest memories. I can't even remember the, the being taught the, the teaching on this because it was so automatic. Two dimes. Hello? Two dimes are brought to the house of God on Sunday morning. And I can still remember sitting in the house of God as a child. Did it all the time. I remember holding in my hand these two sweaty dimes with the blue nose ship on it. You know, do, you, do you know what I'm talking about? These Canadian dimes. Uh, sweaty dimes. And, the, and this offering plate would come around. And I remember as a kid, I'd dump my two sweaty dimes into the offering plate as my parents taught me the importance of tithing, bringing your first fruits, bringing it to the Lord. Uh, these, these, this principle has carried it with me all my life. And one of the things as I matured and grew and, and developed in my faith, I learned something about honoring the Lord. Hello, let me say it again. Honoring, let me say it again. Honoring the Lord with the tithe. I discovered something in my own life as I grew up in the Lord. Here's what I discovered. Can I share this with you? Are you still with me this morning? It's not an option. It's about obedience. Oh, it's quiet in the house. How come? I discovered it's not an option. It's about obedience. Listen, if it's an option in my flesh, I'm not going to do it. Hello? In my flesh, I want to retain. In my flesh, I want to collect for who? Myself. In my flesh. If, it, if this becomes optional, in my flesh, I'll collect it for myself. And I had to learn as I grew up in the Lord, tithing is not an option, it's about obedience. I had to also learn tithing is not based on my emotion. It's about obedience. If it's left to my emotion, I'm not going to feel like it. Hello? Anybody still with me in the house of God? I'm afraid some of you are tuning out slowly. That I, I know something about my flesh. I know something about my pride. That if it comes to giving, I can do it when I feel like it, but I often don't feel like it. 
And that's why it becomes a principle. It's not about emotion. It's about obedience. Here's the other thing I learned. Here's the first one. It's not an option. It's about obedience. It's not about emotion. It's about obedience. Here's the last one. Are you ready? Oh, maybe you want to tie yourself in for this one. And Renee and I have known this over the years. It's not whether I can afford it. It's about obedience. Throughout my life, I've discovered something. God honors his word. I I don't know about you, but in all my ups and downs, failures and fractures and stumbles and trips over life, I've discovered something. God's word does not fail. God's word is faithful. Deborah, can you put this verse on for me? Uh, This Malachi verse, you know it. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And then it says this very unusual phrase. And if you could only grab a hold of this phrase this morning, because this phrase, I believe, is so life-changing. Once I understood it, it changed my life. It says, the Lord says, now try me now in this. If you know what the King James says, it says, test me in this. Now, church, we should not test the Lord your God. We learned that from Matthew 4 when Satan tests Jesus. He says, you shall not test the Lord your God except in giving. Hello? He says, try me now in this. Try it. Take a step of faith. And though you don't feel like it, though you may want it to be optional, uh-uh, though you can't afford it. The scripture says, try me, try me, try me. Test me out. Test me out and see if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Somebody needs to get a hold of that this morning. Try it. Try me now in this, says the Lord. What am I talking about this morning, church? Are you still with me this morning? I'm talking about honoring the Lord. And Isaiah, the problem with Isaiah, he says, oh no, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. So Lord, how do I get beyond lip service? How do I get beyond lip service? I need to honor the Lord with my possessions and the first fruits of my increase. The scripture says, try me now in this says the Lord. But there were days when Renee and I were early married when our cupboards were filled with craft dinner. And I was getting paid as a pastor in my second pastorate $150 a week. People in the church were supporting us with groceries. But guess what? Guess what happened to the $150? 15. Hello? Came off to the Lord. 15. 135 a week. Renee was working. We were just getting by. I was driving a bu- as a bus driver. What came off my bus paycheck? 10% to the Lord. Why? Because the scripture says, try. Church, somebody, you, you just, I'm, I'm challenging you. Try me now in this, says the Lord. And he'll, what does he promise to do? He promises to pour out such a blessing that you cannot contain it. I can't be much longer, but listen, I'll never forget Fred. Do you remember Fred in Acton? Fred, Fred does, Fred's just a country farmer, just a good old boy. He drives a, draw, a John Deere tractor. He's got a cap on, and he, he just loves the Lord. Well, every spring and every fall, Fred would come to our house and knock on the door. He didn't call first. He didn't care about that kind of stuff. He just knocked on the door, opened the door. There's Fred. Fred stands there and says, listen, what kind of shape is your freezer in? I said, Fred, the freezer's empty. He says, well, I'm here to fill it up. And Fred began to unload boxes of chicken and beef to the point where the freezer door couldn't close anymore. I said, Fred, enough. Enough, 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 enough. Uh, and, and we just found the, the bl- church, try me now in this. 
and see if I will not open for you the windows of heaven. Listen, I gotta, I gotta go soon, and I want to pray for you in just a moment. But, but let me just say this to you: um, When I grew up in my house, uh, my parents—I still remember as a child—by the counter on Saturday night, Saturday night, there, you would find our, the Bible, and on top of the Bible there would be a tithe check every Saturday night, prepared diligently by my parents. To come to church, not only with the word of God, but with their worship. Hello? With, can I say that again? With their, with their worship, saying, Lord, thank you. Thank you for the blessings in our lives. If you come to our house, if you come to our house on Saturday night, you're going to find the same thing. We carry the principles uh, of our teachings that if you come to our house if you came over last night, you'd see the same thing. Our worship prepared in the way of an envelope for the house of God. Because the scripture says, try me now in this. Here, I'm almost done, church, but I don't want you to miss this. A lot of Christians, a lot of Christians, I see it and I hear about this all the time. A lot of Christians come, come and say to me, and they've come and say this personally to me. A lot of Christians say, Pastor, I can't afford to tithe. Listen, I understand that. I understand that in the flesh. I understand that in the flesh that somehow you could convince yourself that you can't afford it. But listen, can I put another spin on it for you? You can't stop me from tithing. You can't come to me and say, Pastor, stop. Keep that money for yourself. Listen to me. I have been so convinced of the faithfulness of the Lord. So convinced of the truth of God's word. So convinced to, that I need to honor the Lord with more than just my lip service. So convinced in his blessing, so convinced in his provision, so convinced in his faithfulness, so convinced that you, there's not one person in this room that can stop me from tithing. I get a gift, I tithe off it. I can't wait to tithe because the Lord says, try me now in this and see if I will not Open the windows of heaven. Some people have said to me, Pastor, it's Old Testament. Listen, don't use excuses to give God less. Come to God and say, Lord, I'm going to take your word as it is. Try me now in this. Listen, not one person can stop me from tithing in my poverty and in my blessing. Why? Because God's word is true. He is faithful. And here's what I'm saying to you this morning. In the midst of my fever this morning and in the midst of my sickness, forgive me, church. Listen, here's what I'm saying to the people of God. Some of you are living beneath his blessings. Some of you have hoarded it all for yourself saying, I got these bills to pay. I got a mortgage and I got a car payment and I got kids in school. And you say, I'm taking it all for myself because I can't afford anything else. You are living beneath the blessings of the Lord. And I call you to account today. Church, try it. Step out by faith and say, God, you're greater than all my needs. You own the cattle on a thousand hills. You're my provider. You're the one that makes a way where there is no way. It's not just lip service. I honor the Lord with my possessions and with the first fruits of all my giving. Church, you can't stop me from tithing. I encourage you to honor the Lord. For some of you, it's 11 o'clock and I'm, getting, I'm wearing down. Listen, for some of you, oh, i got to share this quickly. Are you doing okay so far? Some of you are uncomfortable. I'm sorry. Didn't make you, want to make you uncomfortable. Well, I guess I did. I'm sorry. Listen, we got this Greater Works offering going on. You see the thermometer in the foyer. Thank you, Michael, for putting it up. Listen. 
we're taking up, a, we're raising $100,000 so that we can lay the foundation for a greater future for RHPC with consultants and architects and, and all the work that's going in that you're going to hear about in the next few months. We're laying the groundwork. Listen, we got to take care of that. Um, but, but Renee and I were praying for, on our mortgage burning weekend. Uh, Renee and I had, had prayed together and asked the Lord, what, what can we give over and above the tithe? And so we, we prayed, and, and then we said, well, what do you think? And she came up with the same number I did. And uh, we just thought that was from the Lord. So we, we knew that this was sacrifice. So, so listen, it's not $100. It's, it's a, an offering of sacrifice. So we decided to write the check and say, sacrifice. And we put the offering in the offering plate. And time went on. We made up the difference somehow, and time went on, and it was about six or eight weeks after that somebody made an appointment with me from this church, and they're not, they're not, they moved away uh, just recently, but they came and said, uh, I want to meet with you, can I sit down and meet with you, and they said, thank you for letting us serve at RHPC, and we moved away, but uh, the person said, before we go, pastor, I need to give something to you. Because the Lord said, give it, and you have to receive it. If you don't, this will not be good between me and God. So would you be willing to receive this? I said, I'm just here, whatever you want to do. So the person uh, wrote out a check in my name for the exact amount to the dollar that we put in the offering plate for the mortgage burning And listen, church, it doesn't always work like that. But when I received the check, all I did was say, Lord, it's going back to you. All I did was say, Lord, thank you. Keep it moving. Hello? Keep it moving. Keep it moving. And I just was reminded over and over and over again, church, you can't outgive God. We give because God has, he keeps giving and giving and giving and giving and giving again. And the danger is we keep, keep Hoarding more for me, more for what my needs are. Uh, church, the danger is we're, we're not living under the blessing of the Lord. I got to finish. Worship team is coming. Worship team is coming. I got to finish. I want to pray for you in a moment. As the worship team is coming, let me, just, let me just mention this. Maybe you're here and this is new for you. You're a new Christian. I want to encourage you to start tithing. 10% of your income to the Lord. Why? Because God wants to open heaven over your life. He wants to open heaven over your life. Listen, let, let me, number two here. Number one, if, if you're a new Christian, start tithing. Start tithing. Test the Lord. Test the Lord. He'll open heaven over you. The second thing is maybe you're a parent here of a young child. Teach your children the lifelong principle of giving to the Lord. Teach your children, start today teaching your children how to tithe so that they will go through life not looking at money as it's all for them, but they'll begin to say, Lord, I'm going to honor you as first in my life. Start it today. If you haven't done it, I encourage you. Next one is this. Maybe you're here and you're a spouse of somebody who isn't saved. And if you came home today and said to your unsaved spouse, I'm going to start giving tithing to the Lord, your unsaved spouse may say, no, you're not. I want you to just know God knows your heart. God knows your heart. And you just start walking with Jesus. I pray for every unsaved spouse. Amen? Lord, bring them to Jesus. Bring them to Jesus, Lord. Bring them to Jesus. The Lord knows your heart. You give in other ways. This is not about conflict in the house. This is about a decision to serve the Lord. Do you receive that this morning? Listen, last one, and I'm almost done. Maybe you've been a Christian for many years, and you're a mature Christian, but you're living in disobedience. You've hoarded the blessings of the Lord. You've created the scenario that you need every penny for yourself. And you've robbed God. I speak to you today. 
Start tithing. Start tithing. Stop living below the blessings of the Lord and say, God, I'm going to honor you. 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 I'm not giving lip service. I'm going to honor you with all that you've given me. Would you stand with me across this place? In a moment, I'm going to call the prayer team up for those that need prayer. Church, I want to pray for you in this closing moment. I want to pray the blessings of the Lord over you. Can I, can I pray a specific prayer this morning? I want to pray that you would prosper in Jesus' name. How many would receive that prayer this morning in your own life, that you would prosper in Jesus' name? And as you prosper, God would bless you in such a way that you'd, you'd, you'd get to the point in your own life and you'd say, just try and stop me from tithing. Church, I want you to get there, that, that relationship with God that says, I'm not stop. you can't get me to stop tithing for anything. Church, I want you to get there, where you recognize his provision and blessing over your life in abundance, that nothing will stop you from tithing. Listen, I got to end, and you're, you're with me this morning, but let me end with this. A few weeks ago, I went to go see my father. He's 91 years old. His body is broken. He's in a, a permanent brace around his neck, his, his arms. He has broken bones, bruises. If you saw him today, I, I just, it would be, your heart would break if you were to walk into his room and see him in his condition. What's very interesting in his 91st year is that his mind is 100% sharp. His, his thinking is clear. He thinks as if he's 20 years old. He has clear, rapid thinking. If his body was, was, uh, was healthy, he'd be driving, he'd be doing everything today. So a few weeks ago, I go to see my 91-year-old father. He's broken in bed like this. He says to me, hey, son, would you go over to the bookcase and get me my checkbook? And I said, uh, yeah, Dad, sure, no problem. And I thought, I thought to myself, he's going to write me a check. I'm, t I'm getting some inheritance money early. So, so I said, Dad, no problem. So I, I go over to the counter, I find some binders, and I, I, I pull out a checkbook, and I said, Dad, what's this for? You don't bother with this stuff. Leave this to Mother. Don't worry about it. He said, no, no, it's Saturday. Sunday's coming. He said, Will, would you open the checkbook, and would you take a pen, and would you write out the check? Aging Court, Pentecostal Church. Would you fill in the dollar amount? Bring it over here, I'll sign it. It's Saturday night. It's time for worship. It's time. It's time. It's time. I, exalt, I exhort you in the house of God. Don't be somebody that just honors the Lord with your lips. Take the instruction of Proverbs and say, I'm going to honor you with my possessions and with the first fruits of all my increase. As the prayer team is coming, prayer team, would you come? Heavenly Father, I pray over this beautiful congregation this morning. Lord, I pray over this house. I pray over the people of God. Lord, I recognize that there's people here that are new to faith and they have yet to, to take the step of faith and begin to tithe. I pray that, Lord, you would stir their hearts and they would take a step forward and see open heaven over their lives. I pray for our young people today, our young people, that in their faith they would not just have lip service, but they would say, I'm taking a stand on the Word of God because it's true. And they would... Uh, begin to tithe and see an open heaven. Lord, for unsaved 
people who have unsaved spouses and tithing is, is conflictual in their home. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you would just see their heart today and you would give them creative ways to honor the people they live with and to honor the Lord and that you would bless them. We pray for their unsaved spouses today, that you'd call them to faith in Christ. Lord, I pray for people in this church who they've been saved for many years, mature in the Lord, but Lord, they're walking in disobedience. They've made the mistake of hoarding everything for themselves, thinking all along that they need every penny just to get by. Lord, forgive us for our immaturity. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you would pour out such blessing that when people again take a step of faith and say, God, I'm, it's not a, just about lip service. I want to honor you with all that I have. Lord, I speak on this people an open heaven. I pray it out over every person in the sound of my voice. I pray open heaven, open heaven. Lord, I speak it over every household, over every family, over every child, over every spouse, over every grandparent. I pray open heaven in the name of Jesus. Lord, that as we walk by faith, as we step forward in obedience, that it's not an option, it's not emotional, that it's all about obedience. That, Lord, there would be such an open heaven. Somebody, just lift your hand before the Lord today, all across this house. I'm, I'm praying prophetically. I pray an open heaven of health in this house. I pray an open heaven of joy in this house. I pray an open heaven of healing in this house. I pray an open heaven that your kids would come back to Jesus in this house. I pray an open heaven over that there would be a, a river of joy flowing in your household. Lord, I pray an open heaven over people's finances where they're, they, they're living under the spirit of poverty. We break it. We break it in Jesus' name. I break the spirit of poverty. And I pray, open heaven, open heaven. Say it over your lives, Lord. Open, open heaven over my family. Open heaven over my marriage. Open heaven, Lord. I speak it out over the people of God. And so, Lord, today... As we close this service and open the altars for people that need prayer, whatever your need is today, this is your time to come to the altar and say, I'm here. So, Lord, I bless the altar team today as we close this service. I pray that for those that come, they would receive their breakthrough. And, Lord, I bless the people of God for those that walk uh, out to their car, walk to the bus, that make their way home. Lord, I speak it out one more time. Open heaven. Oh, Lord, open heaven over their lives and fill them with great joy. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said, amen. Would you give them praise?